All right, we're in ZBrush 2018 now, and of course, with the new name, ZBrush 2018, it's not ZBrush 4R9. So moving forward, I'm assuming they're going to have ZBrush 2019, ZBrush 2020, etc. And in between those, probably point releases. And the first thing you might notice is this little button right here in the middle of your screen, up here underneath the menus. If you hover over that, you're going to see that Sculptress Pro mode, and it's got a little backslash. That backslash is the hotkey for that, so if I hover over... For example, this move icon, you're going to see there's a move W. That means if I hit the W key, it toggles on move. If I hover over draw, you're going to see I can hit Q and toggle to that. Same thing for Sculptress mode. To activate that, go ahead and hit the back slash key on your keyboard. And that'll go ahead and toggle that on or off. Of course, you can assign any hotkey you'd like to this. All you have to do is hold down Control, Alt, and Tap. And up at the top, you're going to see you can press any key combination to assign a hotkey to that. I'll go ahead and hit Escape to cancel out of that. And you can also just come up here with your mouse and just click this on and off as needed. Now I've gone ahead and already messed up my canvas. If you just, you know, click in here, obviously it's going to start drawing on your canvas. And with the, if you have the simple brush activated, go ahead and hit Control N to clear your canvas. And let's bring out something to sculpt on using this new Sculptors Pro mode. So I'm going to go over here to my simple brush. And when I click on this, I'm not actually clicking on the simple brush. I'm clicking on the tool palette. So if I click on this, you're going to see we have 3D meshes in here that are primitives. So let's go ahead and grab a Sphere 3D, drag it out on your canvas, go into edit mode, and just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go over here into my material palette and change this to matcap gray. You may notice my interface is a little bit different than yours. I've done a little bit of customization. It's down here you can see I have materials and the new snake hook brushes down at the bottom of my screen. Just like with hotkeys, you can customize the entire interfa interface however you'd like. If you want more information on that, go to my YouTube channel and go to Playlist and go to Intro to ZBrush Part 2, and then I'll walk you through hotkeys and customizing your entire ZBrush interface. So now that we have that primitive drawn out on our canvas, if you try to go over here, even though Sculptors Pro mode is on and we have a standard brush selected, if you try to sculpt on it, it's going to tell you you can't sculpt on a primitive, and that's because you can go down here to the Initialize menu. If you open that up if underneath your Tool menu here, you can do all sorts of initialize settings to your primitive before you decide to sculpt on it. If you're ready to start sculpting on the Z-Sphere, all you have to do is go to the top of the tool menu here and click Make Poly Mesh 3D. Now that this is a Poly Mesh 3D, if you come over to your sphere here and start sculpting, you're going to see we're able to sculpt on it, and we have Sculptors Pro Mode turned on. There are some exceptions in ZBrush where you're not going to be able to use Sculptors Pro Mode, Primitives being one of them, Z-Spheres being another, and there are some certain settings you can't use in conjunction with Sculptors Pro Mode. We'll get to those in a bit, but for now we're going to keep this real nice and simple. And for the most part, as long as it's an object, it's a poly mesh 3D, it's made of polygons, you can use Sculptures Pro Mode on it with most brushes. So right off the bat, when we have Sculptures Pro Mode turned on, you're going to notice my cursor is purple. So I'm using my standard brush, and I'm sculpting on my object. Right now it doesn't look like anything special, it's just behaving like any other standard brush. In fact, if we turn off Sculptures Pro Mode just by going up there and clicking the button, and then dragging out, you're going to see here's my standard brush. It seems to be behaving normally, but you're going to see my cursor is red, and if I hold down Shift, the cursor turns blue. If I turn Sculptures Pro Mode on, you're going to see my cursor is now purple, and if I hold down Shift, the cursor is orange. That's just another visual indication for you to let you know while you're working in ZBrush, hey, you're using Sculptures Pro Mode to sculpt when it's purple, and then smooth when it's orange, and then when it's off, you've got red and blue. So let's go ahead and turn that back on. And in order to see this a little bit better, let's go turn on our polyframe over here. If I hover over this polyframe button, and again, I've customized my interface just a little bit, got rid of some icons I never use. So your polyframe button's going to be somewhere along the right-hand side here. But if I hover over this, you're going to see the hotkey for that is Shift-F. So let's go ahead and hit Shift-F. That turns our polyframe on. And now you can see what's happening to our object as we use Sculptures Pro Mode. So if we go over here where we have nice uniform geometry, if we turn Sculptures Pro Mode off and we use our standard brush, you can see it's just deforming the geometry underneath it. Now traditionally in ZBrush, if we go over here to the Tool Geometry menu, in order to get more detail in our strokes, if I turn polyframe off, you're going to see no matter how small we make our brush size, it's only affecting a smaller area underneath the polygons. If we want to make finer detail, we're going to have to go to Geometry and hit Divide. And now we have more geometry to sculpt. And if we keep dividing, we can now sculpt higher and higher resolutions so we can make our brush size smaller and smaller and get more detail that way. Of course, just some ZBrush ba brush basics. If I hold down Alt, that'll dig into your mesh. If you let go of Alt, that'll just go ahead and sculpt out. Underneath your stroke menu here, you're going to see Lazy Mouse for the standard brush is on by default. 
if you crank that up, it's going to let a little rubber band out the back and give you a nice smooth stroke. And you're also going to see as I hover over Lazy Mouse, the hotkey for that is L. So if we hit L, we can toggle that off, and now there's no rubber band. At the top of your screen here, you're going to see there's an undo slider. So instead of hitting Control Z over and over and over again, you can just grab the slider and pull back. And that'll go ahead and drop us back down to where we were before. Now, with the standard brush, and let's go ahead and turn on Sculptor's Pro Mode, you're going to notice if I start sculpting with my standard brush here, with my brush size whatever size I want, if I tap the S key, that brings up my brush size menu. I can just make my brush size bigger or smaller. Also up here, you can grab this draw size up here and change it as needed. You can also hold down your spacebar key and you're going to see you got your draw size right here available for you. But anyway, let's tap the S key and go ahead and make our draw size very small. And even with this low resolution geometry, if you want to see the resolution, again, shift F or turn on the polyframe button over here, you're going to see even though, even though the resolution is pretty bad, it's got a lot of big squares. If we have Sculptor's Pro mode turned on, you're going to see if we zoom in, that we're tessellating this geometry on the fly. So even though there's no geometry here, since my brush size is small, it's going to go ahead and give me that resolution. If we turn our polyframe off, you're going to see what that's giving us. So again, just to demonstrate the before and after or the difference between Sculptor's Pro Mode and not Sculptor's Pro Mode, go ahead and turn off Sculptor's Pro Mode and keep your brush size the same and then drag out a stroke next to these two. And you'll see with it off, it's only going to deform the geometry as it is underneath the brush. However, with it on, depending on your brush size, it's going to give you more and more detail. So if you make your brush size larger, again, just tap S and move this bigger, it's going to give you less detail. And as you make your brush size smaller, it's going to give you more detail.